I feel like people don't believe me when I say it's cold in here. It's like 30 degrees. We gotta warm this baby up. I'm dying slowly. 30 degrees, oh my gosh. Welcome back to the studio. If you're new, I'm Slu. We're here in the studio. I love to paint. If you're familiar with my videos, you know I love to paint portraiture, fantastical stuff, but my desire to speak the language of oil painting more fluently over time, it's like my lifelong practice that I want to improve in. I like to, my desire to improve creates and manifests these little projects I like to execute in hopes of improving, in hopes of getting more familiar. And every practice session doesn't need to be super serious and super intense. Um, this one, it's gonna be wacky. I think it's important to experiment as much as it is to be meticulous and strategize your practice sessions and be kind of very um, up to date and consistent with it. Today, we're gonna get wacky. We're gonna do a five portrait challenge in one day, five portraits. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but I printed out five pieces of paper, five portraits from Google, random portraits, converted them to black and white because I, I don't want any color reference. We're gonna get wacky with the color palettes. We're gonna get wacky with stylized portraits. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but I'm very excited. I'm amped up to paint and I just love to paint. So I wanted to just do some fun paintings, but we need something to paint on first. Stickers and paintings. These are now available on my website, actually. Originals available, including this sucker. Ugh. Okay, okay. Nice. All right, nothing crazy. Wireless saw. This thing's awesome. Let's make a quick line. How tall is each face gonna be? Oh! Splintage. Ay, ay, ay. Oh! Splinter shin bang. Nothing too crazy, just not splintery. Whoa, hopefully we have enough. All right, so we definitely do. Beautiful. Wow. Wow. And so we begin, people of the world. We got the big old canvas ready to go, set up on two easels, and we're just gonna have fun with this. Remember, this whole idea and portrait practice is just to get wacky, try some new things out, and just crank out some cool stylized portraits, learn along the way. We're just kind of um, glazing this burnt umbery color to stain the canvas a little, just to get rid of the white. We're gonna work, again, all from black and white pictures, and that's because, you know, obviously I'm using photo reference to copy, but I don't want to use color reference. I want to kind of come up with my own color schemes, my own skin tones, play around with warm, cool temperatures, things like that. So this first one, um, I could say is the least successful out of all of the uh, five, but um, it's still fine and I still had fun doing it. It, it was just like, uh, you know, all of these are, are about an hour, under an hour, or maybe 15 minutes over an hour. Um, again, this is like a challenge, so it's super quick. And um, this this portrait specifically of this man, very cool reference I got, by the way. It's kind of cut off in this shot, but it's all, um, this one specifically, I, I kind of went, I was like, all right, wacky, wacky. We're trying to go wacky. So I use very wacky skin tone. So I'm mixing this red and blue, obviously to make this purple. And the skin tone is purpley, red and blue. Um, it didn't work out too well. I mean, again, the colors don't matter as much as the value structure. The value structure, I think, was correct and, and fine, but, you know, the colors were just not what I was going for, and it was kind of uh, not the best to look at. But um, we're just figuring it out, and this is probably um, maybe 15, 20 minutes in. You know, I've already gotten the, the, the light um, where the shadow and highlight, or where the shadow and light is coming from, and the overall form and structure, you know, pretty simply. You got the nose um, and, and, and the right side with the shadows and the eye cavities, things like that. So it, it's going around quick. And this is also the first one in the session. So it's obviously a good warm up. I'm just placing the eyes very generally. Guessing where they're going. Pretty, pretty solid placement. Again, the eyes are so important. And if you've watched the videos, it's kind of the hardest thing for me to 
um, execute, but these are fine. Um, in the other portraits, I definitely go a little more ham with the eyeballs, but um, it, it's fine right now. It's just the general sloppiness, and obviously the goal is to stay loose, like if we're technically speaking, paint application, not getting crazy details and wasting time. It's just loose painting, but this was, I would consider loose and sloppy. And the colors just didn't really work super well together. I'm putting in some lighter blues, obviously, for the final kind of highlights. And you see, I, I already put in sort of that yellow reflected light, which I'm going to kind of emphasize a little later right now. And so it's fine. I'm happy with the first one, but I, I was like, all right, I need to step it up. Um, I need to get a little cleaner. You know, there, there's loose and then there's sloppy and then there's organized. So you can see it was fine, totally fine. Definitely under an hour, maybe 50 minutes, we could say. Uh, clean the palette for this next one. And if you're familiar with the channel, a while ago I did a watercolor kind of video where I use this exact reference. And I've seen a lot of people use this um, beautiful woman picture with this intense rim light. Um, and I did a watercolor and it was kind of like a complete fail. I missed the proportions completely. And so this was like redemption. This was a redemption painting with oil, spending a lot more time with it than the watercolor. I think I only did like a 30 minute water watercolor. This is an hour in oil. And I was excited. I was like, all right, we're going to redeem ourselves. And I went with more of a, uh, uh, I guess you could say, quote unquote, realistic skin tones. I wanted cool shadows. So obviously this blue isn't real. Uh, realistic skin tones, but you'll see the skin tone is more of a Caucasian white um, pale fair skin, but um, again, I'm staying loose. I'm just kind of getting in my Shadow shapes in first. That's always what I start with a very um, You know familiar technique to a lot of portrait painters. We work from dark to light, but really I'm just flatting this Character out and that's the strategy I use for all the portraits I just find the darks find the lights very generically and then throughout the portrait you know, kind of nailing the, the three major features, the eyes, nose, and mouth with correct sh head shape. Then I kind of go in with the lightest lights and the darkest darks. But I, I really liked how this portrait came out. You'll see there's a little wonkiness to it, but at the end, I was really happy with it. And um, also this palette, I haven't really talked about the palette. If you again, watch the videos, you know, I like to do Zorn palettes quite a lot. And the Zorn palette is limited. These colors, I think titanium white, um, cadmium yellow, lemon, cadmium red, uh, a, a crazy green, cobalt blue, and a black. This is like a, a palette I don't often use because of the intense chroma of the colors. And so it was something new for me to experiment with, try new color combinations, and actually just finding the colors I was desiring was a, a bit, not more challenging, but different because I'm so used to using the Zorn palette. And I changed that reflected intense rim light i think it was an orangey color before i kind of was like you know what i want to go green so i kind of change it to this paler green not much better i think but that's just what i guess i decided um and we're coming to the end i didn't you know go crazy with the hair just really generic um hair but i, I really love these ice blue eyes um and i think it really brought this you know th this character to life the humanity you know it really invokes kind of the the humanity and, and identity of this character and i think the eyes are the strongest part of this portrait and i was really happy with it i really like the skin tones and i'm practicing on kind of lowering the value of my skin tones so then when i go in with the final light lights like right now uh, i could have more chroma in them and just not crazy chalky using a lot of white so i was really happy with this i think i completely redeemed myself um, it's not perfect. The lips are a little wonky, but I'm really happy with the eyes, soft, beautiful eyes. And yeah, I was just happy with it. So next one. And this portrait was like, all right, this is the third one, middle of the canvas. It's also like a super generic male, straight on, not really three quarter view, really classic, simple, you know, left mid center light coming from the top left mid center. And I was like, all right, let's try the wacky, um, bluish red uh, color scheme palette design from the first portrait that I wasn't super happy with. And I was like, all right, this is gonna be simple because it really is a really straightforward portrait with the light and the straight on male face. It's almost symmetrical, but it really gave me trouble for whatever reason. I never really touched the hair and that's what I decided. And I was just fumbling around for a lot of this. I think I brought it back in the end and, that, and the final painting, which isn't always my thing I'm concerned about. I'm more concerned about the process, the journey I took to arrive. But um, I like the final product that you'll see. Um, there's some intense blues, highlights, 
that I think look nice and it was very stylized but you know this whole part right here I was just like what's going on like I didn't think it looked like the reference at all I don't know if you know it was just I was just confused and that happens and I just kept meddling around fumbling around and I didn't want to spend too much time again because these are quick portraits I still have two more to do um, and I've already been painting for like three plus hours at this point so I was just like all right keep going keep figuring it out and sometimes it takes the final couple strokes of the lightest light because again what you're seeing with your eyeballs is light reflect on form light on form in space so sometimes it takes that light um, the lighter paint to really bring it to life and and whatnot so this is the light electric blue that I thought was cool and fun that I don't get to do a lot and I don't think it's much better in terms of the color scheme as the first one but in all at the end I thought I brought it back a little kind of a super wacky I think this is the most wacky portrait I did of the bunch and this fourth one this absolutely beautiful model girl I don't know I found it on Google again these are random picture portraits I found on Google that I converted to black and white. I was really excited to paint her. I felt very warmed up at this point, painting for three plus hours straight. This was the fourth portrait and <clears throat> I was just amped her super sharp chin and her like gaze. I was just really amped and feeling good. I remember doing this really quick generic outline. I was on top of it. I thought my proportions were good, just meddling around her beautiful neck and I was just amped. And so again, with my ampedness i was like all right i don't want to go too wacky it is still wacky and you'll see with the colors but i was like let's stick to another kind of more realistic bunny ears quote unquote realistic color scheme so the shadows are very green unlike that other portrait my redemption portrait which went really blue this is kind of like a warmer overall um portrait so i start with the shadows again on this left side and it is this green, really cool green. And so same strategy as the other ones. I'm just flatting out. I'm trying to be, you know, clean and meticulous with not losing my shapes with the outline, but it's just the green um, shadow. And then we're gonna flat uh, the, 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 the light side. Uh, you'll see that's exactly what I'm doing. Super simple. It's basically just coloring in the lines, but I wanna just remember the nuance because portraits come to life and the the likeness comes to life with all the nuance of the you know the shape of the nose where the lights hitting the nose and all that jazz which is the best part it's like a puzzle you know it's like a puzzle you make and then a puzzle you have to solve which i love and the hair just like most of these portraits the hair was super super represented simply you know that's just all one color and then i just added some white to that dark violet to give some give some light as if the hair is reflective because the hair is very oily and reflective so you sometimes get some popping highlights and then i was like randomly we might as well do her kind of like shirt whatever she's wearing i was like let's get weird electric blue very poppy very high chroma didn't spend too much time on it but i think it adds it's it's nice and it's just it was i was just feeling myself at this point i was having a blast really confident for whatever reason and i was just having fun and so that's what we did put in the eyes that right eye is a little wonky i think i fix it but again, eyes are so important. I spent my time on these eyes because, you know, they're just so important and I really struggle with them. I think I'm improving, which I'm getting amped about. I did this electric blue eye, like the other woman portrait, which I really liked it, it. Like her darker skin tones with these really light eyes. It looks cool. We got this fan brush right here, kind of just lowering the, the paint, the actual um, body of the paint. So it's a little smoother. I'm adding some shadows a little darker green to the shadow side to give a little more dimension um, because there's obviously different values in the shadows same with the light but um yeah i think this could have been cleaner like looking back obviously i'm always critiquing myself it could have been cleaner but i was going fast this again i think this was the longer portrait i think it was like an hour 15 maybe an hour 20 and the the actual time comes at the end with the nuance because flatting it out outlining it and getting the generic light and dark that takes really quick like first 15 20 minutes and then the end is just really placing little pieces of paint here and there and you want a little darker here or you want to slightly shift this eye to the left or the nose you could look back it started out not super strong so i had to mold that around and uh yeah but i was just super happy with this one really really enjoyed it and i think it came out great one of the more successful ones for sure the electric eyes those specular highlights right there Oh, it's pretty late. It's 1221 midnight. I'm I'm fit. I failed. I'm not gonna finish the five paintings We've done so much today well over six hours of painting. I had to 
go on a phone call for a little and I had to eat dinner. I got here around three, four. Um, I'm really happy with how it's going, but I'm just out of steam and I have one more to do. And I thought it would also be a good idea to save this for um, a live painting session on Patreon tomorrow to save one of these awesome little practice studies for the homies on Patreon. We paint live every week, check it out. But I'm just, I'm just like, you know, I'm just like, I'm zoned in and I'm really happy with these last two portraits that I spent well over an hour and a half, but I'm like, I'm like hazy wired, you know, like cracked out. So I gotta clean up, I gotta do some other stuff. So we'll still be here for another hour, but it's too late, out of steam. We'll finish tomorrow. And so, yeah, I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't do it. I broke under pressure. It was too much painting. I didn't, I wanted to save this obviously for the Patreon, like I said, but it would have just been a stretch and just me not being focused. I was so cracked out and tired. I had a blast that day painting all those things, but come back strong the next day, live streaming on Patreon right now. You could see I'm just quickly putting in this face and I was like, you know what? No, didn't like the structure of those eyes. Like the outline, I like the placement of this head, which I thought was fine, but I was like, I need to restart the features, like the placement of the eyes and nose and whatnot. So that's super easy. Just some odorless mineral spirits to wipe away that oil paint super quickly and back to kind of plotting uh, the foundation of these features. Um, and this, I don't show the palette because I'm using two cameras to live stream, but I'm actually, I changed the palette. The other four uh, portraits were all that same chroma palette that I used. And this one, I decided to use the Zorn palette. This is actually um, a uh, John Singer Sargent painting. It looks like a photograph, but this is a painting of this old man and I loved it. And so I was like, I'm just gonna convert this painting to black and white and do a little ma master copy myself. And I'm so glad I did because it's an absolutely beautiful painting. Um, and I was like, I'm gonna come up with my own colors and do it my way, but that's that. And so I wanted to use the Zorn palette for the masters, I don't know what Sargent's palette was, but I was like, I'm gonna do this master copy. I'm gonna use the Zorn palette, try to get some more quote unquote realistic skin tones again. And this is kind of a weird skin tone. This is like a purplish pink, like a pig pink, but the same kind of idea, I'm flattening it out. I got a little more detailed in the shadows, but it's just light and dark starting out and then figure everything else out. And um, I'm really happy with this. This this, this color design, uh, we'll talk about the color zones in the forehead, the cheeks and the chin, we'll talk about in a second. I wanted some more warmth right here on the shadow side because it was like cold on the shadow side. And I was like, let me just bring in this crazy orange. And I kind of like that idea. Um, you know, pretty pretty loose on there. This is, a, I guess, a tighter painting than the others, but um, still loose and really kind of being aggressive with the paint application using a lot of paint. But we'll talk about the zone. So the chin, generically, this is a generic color zoning strategy. The chin is very cold. The cheeks and nose are red and then the forehead is yellower. So right here, I'm using this gray. It's not an actual blue color, but compared to the other warm colors, that gray looks blue. And then here, I'm kind of adding a lot of yellow to really shift the forehead yellow. Um, and then you'll see that the nose is obviously rosy red, like a lot of people in real life because the blood is so close to the skin there. But I think just this slight color shifts you can definitely tell chin cheek nose forehead area it brings a lot of life to it and i really like that and i've never really tried that i've known about this strategy for a while never really executed it properly or like ever and so i was pretty amped and i really really like this portrait this little master copy only taking about an hour maybe an hour and 10 minutes um and I was live streaming for my patrons, which was awesome. Also, I'm glad they got to see the real time. Check out my Patreon page if you want to live paint with me every single week. But um, yeah. So we're finished. Super happy with this project. Again, I like to practice in different creative projects to get more familiar. It makes practicing more fun. I didn't get to finish all five in one day, obviously, but it was still a great time. Some more successful than others, messing around with different palettes. It was absolute blast. And I would recommend people trying these sorts of challenges or just making little goals, obtainable goals to execute weekly or monthly to help you get on track to continue practicing, speaking the language, just like Japanese uh, or any other language, the language of oil painting, color theory, form, structure, all that good stuff with painting. Check out the merch, check out original paintings on my website. Thanks for tuning in, got a bunch of projects. Really epic, crazy ones planned. 
coming real soon. And you know, critique me. Like I said, I love critiques. I, I don't get enough people looking at my work on Discord, on Patreon. We have um, an ongoing kind of art critique community art page where we talk about art and people post work. So, you know, I always love feedback. Let me know. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next video.